All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're gonna to take a look at something just a little bit different. This is gonna combine some of the skills that we've learned over the past year or so inside of Adobe Photoshop. So a lot of people are stuck inside, depressed, not feeling so happy because of the COVID virus going around now. And this really doesn't have anything to do with the virus. It's just kind of a cool effect and something that you can do to any portrait to personalize it a little bit more. So we have this picture of this person here looking a little bit depressed. Now, they don't have to be depressed in this image. This is just what we're gonna be using for this tutorial. Now I have three different images here. So I have this picture of this lady. I have this texture picture and another texture picture. I found that over the years, a lot of times when you're doing stuff like this, having a variety of different textures kind of will help blend in and make this look a little bit better than it would without having the textures. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a cool little trick here. We're gonna go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into a Stack. Just gonna hit Add Open Files. Now sometimes you will get this little disclaimer, documents must be saved before they can be merged. And what that's saying is that you have some open files and for some reason the computer wants you to save them first before it will let you add them to the script. We can just come in here and just hit save to all this stuff. So I'll just hit save and hit save. Basically we've made some modifications to the images and the computer is just being safe and making sure that you can't lose or ruin some information. Once again, we'll go down to file scripts, load files into a stack, and now we should be good to go. It's loaded all images into a stack. We don't need to align these because that's not important in this image, and we're not gonna create a smart object. So we're just gonna go ahead and say okay. And what that's gonna do is basically just load all three images into one file. Now, you will notice that each one of these files is actually a different size which is okay, we're not wor too worried about that. We're gonna put this main image of the girl below it, and I'm gonna put the wood above the ice, but I'm just gonna turn on her picture, and we're gonna kinda zoom out here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crop this image down to this subject here. We will hit clear, and we'll come over here and crop this. This is a little bit of a square image and then I'll hit okay. And basically I just wanna get this image down to her. I think I'm gonna come up a little bit and we are good to go. This image here, we have the wood and we have the pattern. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a selection of her. Now you have a couple of options of doing this. Basically we're going to be putting a poem or text over this image. Sometimes you want the text to not go over your subject, and sometimes you do want the text to go. And sometimes you are gonna want some of the text to kind of overlap your person. So if you do wanna do that, you can always select your subject, make a mask. Now you're not gonna actually use the mask on the person, you're gonna actually end up moving it up to the text layer. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how that's done. And then I'm probably just gonna end up deleting it because we're not gonna use it. But I'll show you how it works. Come up here to the new selection tool. I will just quickly select her. AI of Photoshop should do a pretty good job of selecting her out. Now it's not perfect, but that's okay for this tutorial. If you were trying to do this for real, you wanna make a little bit better selection. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a mask. Now it looks like crap. Don't worry about that because for what we're gonna use and how this is gonna work. It's gonna make sense in a second. So the next step we're gonna come over here is to easily just get some text and I'm gonna come up here. I am going to click on this top left corner and drag down because we want a text box for this image and I'm gonna let go. And by default, Photoshop is gonna start adding some lorem ipsum, which is just some fake text. At this point, you'd wanna take a poem or a saying or whatever text you want to add to this image and you can just go ahead and paste it in here. 
In this case, I'm going to enlarge this text a little bit. So the next step is to copy the text if it doesn't fill up your image. So I'm gonna hit copy. And then I'm gonna start hitting V, 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 V. And you can see what I'm basically doing is copying that text. Now this is way, 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 way too small. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hit Command A because we need to select our text. I'm gonna enlarge it. Looks pretty good for right now. And what I'm gonna do, we're gonna eventually come in here and fix this. I'm just gonna click off of this so you can see the text is here. It's, it's the right color, but because we have this translucent background, it's not the right color. Now here's where you would use that mask. You're gonna hold your Alt Option button, drag your mask up to the text layer. Now it's the opposite of what we want right here, so we're gonna hit and I to invert that. And we're gonna hit Shift Delete, which is the Fill command. Make this back at 100. I was doing something else. Fill it with white. That's gonna take make so now the background isn't being removed. And now you can see, now I've kind of got this text overlaying this image. Now it's not on our subject because we're using this mask. In this case, I don't really want that. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this mask. I want the text to be completely over my whole image. Let me drag the character thing in here. So right now I've got this image, but the text is too close together. So what I'm gonna do is, is double click the T to select the text, and I'm gonna start enlarging this because I want the, the font to be bigger. It's important that you get a cool font for this. If you get too clean of a font, it doesn't look good. It just kind of looks or unrealistic. Now we're gonna come up here to right here and we're gonna start moving the different lines. What this does is make as you hit return and you have spaces, it's increasing the space between the lines. So this is moving the different lines closer together and then farther apart. So in this case, I, I wanna make it a lot farther apart. So we're gonna, we'll try something like that for right now and I'm gonna go ahead and click here and say that's okay. We're gonna move this just a little bit. Okay, and now we have our text over top of our image, which is what we want. And you can make this as, as large or as small as you want, anything that you wanna do. So you can see it's really clean right now and it's not working. Now you can come in here and lower the opacity, which I will probably do. So I'm gonna lower the opacity so it starts blending into the image. We can always come back here and do that. I'm gonna move that character button out of the way. But we've lowered the opacity, that looks good. Now here's where starting to add other layers is really going to help. We have options to do this. So I'm going to hit this pattern and I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer on. We can come up here and start seeing what the different blending modes look like. So as we start to blend this, this is adding some texture. And because this layer is above both of these, it's going to apply to both layers. If the text layer was above it, it, it wouldn't do the texture over the font but we want to have this on top of these two layers. That's important. Layer order is always important. So we're going to come down here and we're just going to start hovering over the different fonts. There's no right or wrong. It's just kind of what you're trying to achieve in your image. In my case, I'm going to probably go end up going with soft light but you're just gonna scroll down and see the different effects. That's actually kind of a cool effect there, which is exclusion. I've never actually used it, but I do like the effect. But in this case, we're gonna do just, we're gonna come down here and use soft light. The thing about soft light is you have to remember it's increasing your contrast. So it has made our subject a little bit brighter. I might have to go in and darken her up a bit. Not a big deal, but it is increasing the contrast. So the next step will be to turn on this wood layer. We need to make sure that it's highlighted or selected. Now, don't worry that the wood layer is smaller. It's just a texture. It's not gonna be a huge issue if we lose some resolution on this. So I'm gonna hit Command T so we can transform this. And we're just simply gonna just drag this out. And 
center that. I'm going to hit return to apply that. And then once again, we can either just kind of lower the opacity or we can check out some different blending modes to see how this affects our image. Cool effect. Remember, there's no right or wrong. Originally when I did this, I did do it as soft light, but I think I'm gonna change it up and maybe do something a little bit different this time. There's no reason. And you can always copy all this information and do a couple different variations of the same image. Don't feel like you just need to do it one way. You know, do it a couple different ways and then take a look at it. So this is kind of aggressive. I think we're gonna go with this vivid light. Now, I think it's a little too much, so we're gonna start lowering this. And basically what we're doing is we're kind of blending this. We're saying, okay, we like that effect, but we don't want it that much, so we're gonna lower this until we kind of nice combination of the two. So we'll kind of scroll out a little bit. So now you can see we've kind of got this text over our subject. Now I'm gonna come up here to the text layer now, and what I'm gonna do is create a mask. So I want to fade in and fade out this kind of poem or saying, or in my case, it's just Lorem Ipsen, in and out of the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush tool and I'm gonna lower my flow down to like low. We'll just do 10 or 11%. I think that will speed it up. Normally I usually work about five, but we're just gonna use 11 because it's a tutorial and I can do things a little quicker. Now we want it to paint out. So we wanna make sure that this foreground color is black. And then what we're gonna do is just start to paint. Now remember, we're not doing anything, we're just applying a mask, so we can always put this back in if we don't like what we did. And basically what I'm doing is just kind of fading some of this out of her face. And then I can come up here, and I, I'm taking this, and basically all I'm doing is just kind of blending this into the image. I'm making some stuff more readable, and some stuff less readable. And so this will make it look like it's not so consistent and it really actually was there a little bit more than if we didn't do this. Remember, we can always lower the opacity of this text well. So we're just trying to get an effect, but not perfect. And there's all kinds of different things you could do to the text. You could go in here and do some different layer styles and effects as well. We're just trying to blend this image in a little bit. So we're gonna go into this pattern right here. I'm gonna add a mask to that. And remember, I can paint stuff in or out. So right now it's black, so I'm kind of painting a little of this effect out of her face. I don't wanna completely remove it. I'm actually gonna hit Command Z to undo that. I didn't like what it was doing there. We're just removing some of it, and then we can do the same thing on the wood too. So if you wanna bring a little bit back of her face a little bit, now we want some of that texture there. You can just simply go in and paint stuff in and out, in and out, in and out to get the effect that you want. To go back down here to the text layer and just kind of wash out some of these areas. And just like this, we've created ourselves a little bit of fine art using text, some overlays on a portrait, trying to express the feelings of how we feel at this moment in time. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.